What is going on guys, it's Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to a new video, and in today's episode, as you can see, I've got the FT Mustang right here. We're not talking about the plane, um, but I really do love this thing. Uh, one thing that really hinders it, and you probably have this issue on a lot of your planes, is you can see my receiver placement is absolutely terrible. It's right back here behind the battery. I cannot get to any of the ports at all, let alone the bind port, which is the one in the very back. And uh, I often have to rebind my models, whether it's to switch diff between different models on my radio. I have different ones set up for different flying experiences, scale versus like crazy, um, different rates, things like that that I want to try out and keep my old uh, ones saved. Th things like that, switching between transmitters, it's really hard because I need these a lot, these little bind plugs, but I can rarely ever get them in place, especially in such a tight little mounting position like the FT Mustang has right here. So yeah, um, in today's video I've got a little workaround for you guys. Um, a slight modification uh, that you guys can do to make this a lot easier of a process just to go ahead and bind up your planes without having to fiddle with your little bind plugs and making your receiver placement completely ideal. It's a bind plug switch. You're actually uh, not even going to have to use these bind plugs at all. It's going to be a really excellent modification uh, for your airplane. Alright guys, so there's a few components you're going to need to complete this build. They're pretty cheap. Um, you should, probably should just have them laying around. But if not, I'll leave links in the description below, especially to this switch um, that you'll need. It's just a few bucks for like a 10 pack off Amazon, and they're super useful. Um, but the main thing is pretty much an RC mainstream accessory. That's a servo lead right here. Uh, you can see this is just off a servo, ripped it off. Um, I have a lot of dead servos, so um, it really wasn't that big of a deal. You can also use a bind plug if you don't have a servo extension. Just go ahead and solder up some extensions of your choice of length onto the end there. Cut it in half. Um, but in my case, we're going to use this servo lead, and you're not going to need the positive wire, um, so you can rip that out if it would really be a benefit to your model to have less weight. Um, however, I'm just going to fold it back because obviously it's not doing any harm. I'm just sitting there, and if I ever want to use it for later, um, I'll have that positive wire all uh, strung in and ready to go. Um, so yeah, you're also going to need a two-position switch, so you got like an on and an off. So two positions, it's going to have three tabs on the bottom. The center one is going to be where your power would normally go in. And it doesn't really matter which way you solder these up, um, but we're going to solder signal to the center and negative uh, to the outside. You can choose one of the outside, it doesn't matter. Obviously, if the switch is on this side, then it's going to power the circuit between these two pins. And if it's going to uh, switch on this side, it's going to power the circuit between those two pins. So the blank one is going to be off and the closed one is going to be on. Anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get into soldering. Speaking of soldering, if you guys have never done this before, um, it's basic soldering skills required for this. However, um, it can be pretty intimidating. This is a great place to learn. However, uh, it might just be easier if you got someone that's more um, ver well versed in soldering because this is pretty small, small stuff that you might be dealing with. Um, and depending on your switch, it could fry it or melt it or anything like that. Um, so there are definitely better places to learn, but this is a pretty risk-free um, option if you guys are looking to get into soldering. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to use some helping hands here. This is just a tool with a magnifying glass and some alligator clips uh, that I can clip my switch onto so it doesn't you know, go around all over this board. I also, speaking of, have a board right here so I don't mess up my new work surface um, with burn marks and things like that. Um, as well as, you're obviously going to need some solder. I'm using some rod, rosin core solder right here. Uh, pretty simple stuff. And a soldering iron. Mine's just a little Weller um, adjustable soldering iron uh, that I set to like medium heat. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. First things first, uh, let's clamp the switch into the helping hands, um, as you can see right there. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm doing just a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to take my two ends. We're just going to go ahead and tin these up um, before we get going too far along. These actually already have some solder on them, so I'm pretty good to go in that nature. But um, all we really have to do right here is just, just tin them up, use a little bit of solder, get them nice and shiny, um, and then... Obviously, you also want to use steel wool to clean off the tip of your soldering iron just so there's not any excess uh, material on there that's going to cause more trouble down the road. So yeah, um, as you can see, let's flip this over. Um, as you can see right here, I um, have pre-tinned up my pads right here for um, this. So all I really have to do is just go ahead and tack these on there. There's one. And there's two. So yeah, with that done, um, as you can see, it's nice, firm, and in place, but what I'd like to do, um, just for the longevity of this uh, repair that we just did, or this modification that we just did, cover it in some hot glue. Um, it's going to really make it last a lot longer, and these connections won't come apart, especially if you put the switch in somewhere that's really hard to get to in the future. So yeah, let's go ahead and let that dry, um, and go ahead and get a test circuit ready. 
Alright guys, so as you can see, I got this switch mounted in there to the bind port. It took me about five minutes to do. It was crazy. I had to take the receiver off and everything. And now we won't have to deal with that because we have this bind switch right here. Um, it's currently engaged, um, so the binding mode should be enabled when we plug it in because obviously the switch is on the side of the connection we just made. Um, so yeah, bind mode is on. I'm going to go ahead and set you guys down and hopefully uh, when we plug this in, it's going to work properly. And there we go, you can see right in there, um, in the fuselage, as well as over here under the scoop with the satellite, uh, we are in bind mode successfully. So I'm really happy with that, obviously the binding function does work on this. I'm going to bind my model up to my radio, um, then we'll see if it bypasses it when the switch is disengaged. Alright guys, so the bind was successful, as you can see, I do have control of the aircraft. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and unplug it, and we're going to flip the switch back to the normal mode where the bind is disengaged, um, and hopefully it will go right back into its normal startup procedure, um, and obviously not go into bind mode. Alright, and there you have it guys. Um, the final thing that we can do is we can go ahead and mount our new creation um, onto the plane. As you can see, um, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and mount it right um, facing outside of the plane. You know, just cut a little hole with like a flat head screwdriver or a barbecue skewer or something. Stick it right in and it will work great. However, um, just for the looks of this plane, I'm going to go ahead and leave this mounted right in here. Alright guys, so I finished up mounting the bind plug switch system right here. It just goes back from the receiver along this side, uh, hot glued in place so it doesn't uh, get in the way of my battery mount. Um, and then as you can see, it's just mounted right here on the firewall. Easy to get to with my fingers, um, just hot glued it down um, and it's got bind mode off, bind mode on. Simple as that, and I'm really happy with this result. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this modification. All the links uh, to the parts and things that I use for this video will be in the description below. Uh, you can pretty much say goodbye to these forever if you make a common habit when you build your planes just to get one of these switches and a servo extension, um, and it's a really, really nice hack. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing, as well as commenting any questions you have, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.